Hello and welcome to this demonstration video. My name is Kai Keeley and I'd like to introduce the SNOMED OWL toolkit and demonstrate how it can be used to classify SNOMED CT using RF2 files on the command line. The SNOMED OWL toolkit can be found under github.com. I'll provide a link uh, along with this video. Let's have a look at the readme file. So it's an open source toolkit to make SNOMED CT OWL conversion and classification simple. It's backward compatible with all past RF2 releases and will be forward compatible with all future releases. So new versions of this tool will be produced as new description logic features are added to SNOMED CT. For example, if we add concrete domain support into the international edition, then a new, a new version of this tool will be made available. The tool is a Java library um, with some information about its capabilities here and it can be used on the command line for certain functions. Um, a full list of um, functions and options is available here and then below we have a couple of shorter examples. Um, classification um, is here. So the first thing we need to do is check that we have Java installed. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to use the terminal application. I'm going to type Java minus version. And I can see that Java is installed, uh, version 1.8. And version 1.8 or above is required for the SNOMED OWL toolkit. If you don't have Java installed, um, I can recommend going to java.com. Um, or use Google to search for the best way on your operating system. So once we have Java installed we also need the jar file for this program so we can go to the latest release page to download that. The latest release will be marked in green here, latest release, it may not be 1.6 that we may have a later version of the, the SNOMED OWL toolkit and I, you need to download this executable jar file. I've already done that so I'll go back and continue. Um, here are the, as I said, the full list of command line options. We're going to go down to the classification example. So to run the classification process we will use the executable jar and we'll also need to supply a zip file which contains the RF2 snapshot files. So on my local machine I have the SNOMED International Edition, um, the, the July 2018 release. So I'm going to go back to the terminal and let's make this slightly bigger. And on my desktop I have a folder where I have the SNOMED OWL toolkit executable file and I also have the SNOMED international RF2 file uh, RF2 archive I should say so let's follow the instructions here we type java minus jar then the name of the executable file um, I'm using tab to autocomplete on a Mac and then we give the command as classify and the input archive RFT snapshot archives. So we can give a list of archives. So if we were classifying an extension, we would typically give the international snapshot, which that extension is dependent on, and the snapshot of the extension itself. Um, but in this example, I'm just going to classify this name in international edition. So now I'm giving the the path to my local RF2 file um, it's in the same directory so that's easy just giving the file name now I'm going to hit enter and that will go ahead and it will extract the snapshot archive uh, the snapshot RF2 files it needs from this archive and it will run the classification process if we go back to the readme um, it says after about one and a half minutes, 
um, an RF2 Delta archive will be written to um, classification results um, with a, the date stamp here. So this Delta archive uh, should just contain the changes found to the inferred relationships. The SNOMED CT International Edition archive that I provided already contains fully classified um, content and all the inferred relationships are already there in within that zip file so I'm expecting the results um, Delta archive from this uh, command line uh, run to contain empty files because there should be no change to the inferred state um, if we did want to um, make some content um, appear in the in the results we could provide um, a second archive we could create an RF2 archive containing um, some new concepts or some new state of relationships or new axioms um, and then we would expect a, a change to the inferred um, relationships um, and those 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 changes um, just the changes would be written out um, into the Delta archive so the this Delta archive, the, the results file, contains um, a relationship file um, and the active column is used. Um, so if a, if a 1 is in the active column, um, it shows that it's a new inference, um, whereas inactive rows with, with a 0 uh, shows that uh, an existing inferred relationship has um, is now redundant in the, in the new um, inferred uh, form. Uh, the archive also contains um, a reference set with um, any equivalent concepts. Let's go and have a look at um, our relationships file we've got. So the process is run, it took um, about one and a half minutes. The results file is written out here. Um, let's unzip that. And it's created a directory called RF2 with two files inside. Let's open that up. Um, this one here. So this relationship delta should be empty. Yes, it's empty. And we have the equivalent concepts um, reference set, which is also empty. Um, I'm going to show you another example. So we can see what would happen if there were um, results. So this is an example I, I ran earlier where I did have um, uh, I didn't have fully classified content in the in the snapshot archive. So here we can see in the um, active column we have a zero to show that um, this existing relationship has is now been found to be inactive, and we have a few new uh, inferred relationships um, which are active and um, it has no ID there's no um, ID generator in this in this tool these are these are new relationships um, they have no effective time because um, we haven't yet released these files um, they have the active flag they don't have a module because um, the tool isn't aware of uh, what extension or anything you're working in um, but we do have the the source the destination um, concept we have the relationship group and the type ID. Okay, so that's the example of uh, a rela relationship changes. We also have the equivalent concept reference set. Well, this is confusing. Is this one I want? Here. So in the reference component ID, we have the ID for two concepts and the map target shows the um, group of equivalent concepts they're in. So these two concepts are within the same group of equivalent concepts, which means these two concepts have been found by the, the owl reasoner um, in the classification process to be logically equivalent. This is not a desirable thing when classifying SNOMED, so the modeling of one of these concepts um, should be changed so that we don't have any equivalent concepts in our classification results. Um, I should mention that um, today I've classified the July 2018 
um, international edition. This is the first edition where we've had both stated relationships and our axiom, uh, the our axiom reference set as well. Um, there's been a few changes to the classification process, so um, from now on, people either need to use this tool for for um, the classification of of SNOMED content um, to produce the in, the inferred relationships, um, or they need to you know update um, any other tooling so that it um, follows the the new procedure, um, which includes the the owl axioms. Otherwise, you you're going to get inaccurate um, classification results. Um, that's all I wanted to show you. If you find this toolkit useful, please do um, click this button here in GitHub to star the repository, which will help other people to, to find it. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching.